Vision Church family, let me hear you this morning. Come on, is anybody blessed in the house? Are you a blessed person this morning? Come on, point to someone and say, you're blessed. I'm blessed. We're blessed. Do you know this one? Oh, I think we know it. So we want you to join in right where you are. You can clap your hands. You can sing with your mask on. But how many know that we are blessed? <laughs> All right, praise team, you ready? Thanksgiving. 
on. Let's put your hands together. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Welcome this morning to Revision Church Atlanta. We're so glad that you've joined us for this first time in about 20 months in person yeah. worship gathering. We are grateful for all of you who are watching across this country and around the world. Thank you for joining us in this place virtually. And thanks to all of you who are able to be in this place here today. Come on, put your hands together. Let the people online hear you. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are safely gathered. There's social distancing. We're wearing our masks, but we've come to praise God today, and we're looking forward to it. How about you, baby? Yes, I'm excited. Yeah, we're excited. We're excited about what God has to do. And as we usually do, we want to invite everyone who's watching virtually if you would just grab your device, we want you to say good morning. We're still going to do shout outs. Yeah. We want you to say good morning where you're watching from, right? And in the audience right here, we want you to do the same thing. Get your All phones right. out. All right. Get your phones out. We still going to have question of the day, all yeah. of that. We want to make sure for those of you who are watching that this is just as real, just as meaningful, just as intimate as what we usually have been doing for the last several months. So we want you to make sure that you say good morning. We're going to see it here on our screen here. Say good morning, where you're watching from, and we're going to shout you out, all right? All right, we're going to put that up on the screen. Good all right, morning. good morning, good morning. We've got right, Neskins from Toronto, all Ontario, right. all right. Back. Welcome, Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, Neskins, and the whole folks, yeah. all my people Do we from have my any hometown. Canadians in the audience? Any Canadians here in any the audience? Any Canadians? All right, we have yeah. one. Hey, all, right, all right, there goes another one back there. All right, all right. Welcome, there's, welcome. There's two of us here. There's two of us. All in right. In Canada. All right. Donna, Donna Dixon from Fort Pierce. Okay. Florida, Florida. Welcome. All right. What about Floridians? Any Floridians in the house? All right. We all have right. one right there. Our, Sandra. Sandy, Sandy's uh, Stephanie's Floridian. godmother. Yes. That's right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Who welcome else we got? Welcome, Floridians. We got Velma Thomas. Welcome back from... Humble, Texas. Humble, Texas. All we right. We have any Texans in the house? All right. Any Texans? Oh, all right. Yeah, that's, that's right. true. That's, My God. Okay, you play with Texas guys. That's right. That's right. All right. right. All right. Claude is coming and watching from Oslo, Norway. Oh my. All right, welcome. All the welcome. way from Norway. Glad you're with welcome. us. We're not gonna ask if any uh people from you know, Norway. We may are have here. some Norwegians in the house. Who's to say? <laughs> all right, all right. Claudia, Torres, Farina. Okay. All right. Buenos Aires. From Buenos Aires, Argentina. Yes, welcome. Back. Welcome. Welcome back, Claudia. Yes. All right, all right. Glad you're here. Anita. Anita from Queens, Queens, New, New York. York. We know New York's in the building. What about right, New York? All right, wait a minute. Come on, New Yorkers. All right, okay. okay. All right, three, four. All right, New Yorkers. Not five. New Yorkers always got to be loud. Y'all in the house. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. Sandra Joseph coming us coming to us from Watford. Yeah. Watford, from United the UK. Kingdom. All right. We love our Shout UK out to family. All of our UK Good people. morning. That's right. Good morning. All right. Who Good else we got? Good morning. So we have the Thomas family. From Jamaica, welcome. All right, all right. Welcome. All right. Any Jamaicans in the house? Jamaica representative. All right, we have a two or three. Right. Come on, they there. Okay, all right. <laughs> good, good stuff, good stuff. Yes. Hey, Dr. Court, Dr. Court. All, all right. right, Locust Grove. From Locust Grove, Georgia. Okay. All right, Locust Grove. These are some of our members. Tracy uh, from London. All right. Yes, I'm assuming another that's London. UK family UK. member. All right, good stuff. Who else we got? Who we else got we any got? people live in the ATL? We want right. to see them up there. All right. Jessica, Jessica Cook. Cook, good morning, wherever you at. Yeah, that's right. Good to see you. Good, good to, to see, see you. you this morning. All right, who else we got? A couple more, a couple mm -hmm. more. Hey, all right. Sister all Houston, right. Chelsea Houston's in the building. Live from the front row. That's right. So glad you joined <laughs> us. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. And for everybody, oh, oh, Keisha, oh, Keisha is watching from Loganville. Loganville, all right. Yeah, didn't make it, didn't, didn't make it we'll this morning. We'll see you next time, honey. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Good morning. Good morning, good morning to everybody. Everyone. For all those who are here, one more time, put your hands together so the people online can hear you. All right. Well, every time, you know, we like to have a question that kind of allows us to kind of interact. Mm -hmm. Stephanie usually comes up with a good question or something that you can uh, participate in. So what's the question today, babe? Okay. So it's not a question. It's a fill in the blank. All right. This is a fill in the blank. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, somebody say yes. So you got to <laughs> fill that in. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. And then you fill in you the You fill in what happens next. All right. So even if you're here in the audience. We need you to put that put, in. Put it on, put it on, on your phone. Your, yeah. your, make in the sure chat. That you're, put it in the chat. For those I of you who are watching. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. Put it in the chat. When mm -hmm. I think of the goodness of Jesus, 
You fill it in on the chat, all right? Okay. Now, Facebook and on YouTube, mm -hmm. and we're going to put it up on the screen. We're going to shout it out for those who can't, you know, who aren't able to see it. We're going to read the answer, some of the answers. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, dot, 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 you and fill in the blank. what comes to mind for you is what I want to know this morning. When I think of the goodness yes, of Jesus? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, 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 you're going to see later on. All I like right. to shout. Okay. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, I like to shout. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When um, I think of the goodness. When you think yes. of the goodness of Jesus, I know what you do. Uh, what I do? Not, well, you do a bunch of things. <laughs> Cry, shout, and, uh, you know, speak in tongues, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Bless all his right, name. All right, all right. Amen. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, dot, dot, dot. Here we go. Um, yeah. Look within you says, I can't help but praise him. All right, all right. All right. I look love within. It. I love it. All right. When all I, right. We got an amen corner. Amen. There. All right. You got to put it in the chat. Put Natalie it in the chat. says. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, a smile comes over my face. All right. All Natalie. right. We love it. We love yes, it. Denise yes. Glover says it often brings me to tears. Mm, just yeah. thinking of the goodness. Thinking of the goodness yes. of Jesus. All right. Carissa Rivers says my soul cries out. Well, you went ahead and finished Come it. on. You finished it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Good stuff. Nicole St. Louis says. I think of my praying grandmother mm -hmm. when she thinks of the goodness of Jesus. Yeah, That's all yeah. right. Anybody think about some of those who may not uh, be with us even today? Mm -hmm. We think about the goodness of Jesus. Amber, Amber says, When I think of the goodness of Jesus, I'm overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. She's yeah. overwhelmed. Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right. Darnese says, I feel so grateful. Anybody yes. grateful in the house yes. today? Yes. Grateful, grateful. Hallelujah. All right, let's get a couple more. When mm -hmm. I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, Marie Jones says, oh. I'm filled with complete, complete. joy. Yes. Complete joy. Yes. I love it. I love Wonderful. It. All right, one more. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus, Phyllis says, it makes me want to shout. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Right. Bless him this came. morning. That's what Bless we came him here this today morning. To give him glory. He's worthy. Yeah, yeah. Today, mm -hmm. as we come on this Sabbath that follows Thanksgiving, yes. we want to give God all of the thanks, all of the praise that he's worthy of. Yes, and for all of you who are watching, uh, you've got something to praise God yes, for. Yes, you do. And so we want to offer up a word, a prayer of Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. As you're watching, you might want to drop a praise, just a praise in the chat. Yeah. Something you want to thank Jesus for. You don't have to write a paragraph. It doesn't have to be long. Just share with your brothers and sisters on the live chat what God has done for you, what you're praising him for right today. Now. Right and now. as we usually do, I'm going to ask my lovely wife, our first lady, Stephanie, to pray for us this prayer of thanksgiving. Yes. And even at home, and for those of you who are in the audience, would you just join me with raised hands yes. as we pray this prayer of thanksgiving. Yes. You can't get both of them up, at least one. Just raised hands. Yes. Even there at home, raised hands. Just Hallelujah. thank you, God, Hallelujah. for your goodness. Let's go to the throne of God in prayer. Yes, and even as we go, before we start to pray, I want you, whether you are in your car, in your bedroom, or you're live and in person, I want you to begin to speak aloud and speak good of God this morning. It will change your mind and your attitude. Even now, begin to speak good of him as you lift your hands to the heavens. You're praying out loud now. You're not waiting for me to start. You're speaking well of your heavenly father. Begin to thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his grace. It's okay if your neighbor hears you right next to you. Right next to you. Begin to speak well of him. What has he done for you? How has he kept you this week? How has he kept you throughout the pandemic? Tell him he's kind. Tell him he's loving. Tell him he's faithful this morning. And begin to just give him glory. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. We're blessing you right now. We're speaking well of you right now, Lord. God, we thank you that you saw fit for us to be here today. That you look beyond each and every one of our faults and you met our innermost needs. God, we speak well of you because you are a good God, because you are faithful, you are kind, and you are true. And we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it's power unto salvation. Oh, we can continue to look at you and live. The word of God declares, in the beginning was the word, 
and the word was with God and the word was God. We thank you for that creative word that you continue to speak into our lives, to raise us up off of our bed of affliction, to change our mind, to forgive us of our sins and to give us newness of life. Lord, as we near the end of this year, may we find ourselves deeper in love with you. May we find ourselves more committed to you. May we find ourselves falling in love with you all over and over again. So we praise you because you are the only wise God. We praise you because there's no other God like you. We praise you because you can raise the dead. We praise you because you can cause blind eyes to see. We praise you this morning because you can touch our tongues. And tongues that used to speak death can now speak life. That is why we praise you. We love you this morning, God, not just for what you have done, but what we know by faith you're going to do for your children. We're asking that your spirit will live in us in such a way that we will be a light in this dark world. We won't have to tell people about Jesus. They will know that Jesus lives once they've come in contact with us. So with that, we praise and bless your holy name. We exalt you. You're all-knowing, all-powerful, all-able. And we love you with every ounce of our being. In the mighty name, the powerful name, the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and praise God. Right where you are, you are in the presence yes, of the living God. Whether you're in your living room, your bedroom, your kitchen, you are in the presence of the living God. Yes. Same spirit that's here. Yes. It's right with you, right where you are. We're getting ready to praise God, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to deliver the word today. I want you, if you're at home, to stand up, because we're going to stand up. Yes. And we're going to praise God. Everybody in the building, would you stand to your feet? Praise team's going to come lead us in worship. Amen. I want you to get off the, co the, the couch. Come on. Stand up off the sofa. Come That's on. right. Act like you in the building. Mm -hmm. Let's sing these songs of praise together as we worship God together today. Yes, You know, in this song that we're about to sing, I was reminded, or actually I was informed that sound, once it is emitted, once it comes out of your mouth, that that sound just lives forever. And it made me think about the scripture that says his word never returns to him void, meaning that what he speaks, it goes on and on. So what he spoke over you when you were even formed, before you were even formed, those words are lasting throughout eternity. And he called you good. He called you his child. And it also reminded me that whatever I say, that I have the power of life and death in my tongue. And that I don't want to curse my life. That I want to bless my life. That I want to bless those things and those people around me. So be careful with your words, friends. Because they... They resound throughout eternity. His mercy endures forever. Do you believe it? Come on, tell someone next to you, his mercy endures forever. the atmosphere with his words. With 
with his goodness. Come on, tell him how good he is this morning. First Lady just reminded us that we can begin to feel the atmosphere. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We say that your mercy endures forever. There is no God like you, no God beside you, no God before you. And so we come to lift up matchless, mighty name of Jesus. Do I have a witness in this place? Come on and speak well of him. Come on, tell him you kept me. You kept me through 2022, 2021, and 2020, oh God. You kept me. You are my companion when no one was there, oh God. And I thank you. Bless your name, Jesus. Right here in the circle. You know what his mercy? His mercy is forever. Come on, sing it. His mercy. His mercy endureth forever. Come on, just think about him. Think about his that fact. His mercy endures forever. And ever. Oh, maybe you know someone who's feeling a little discouraged this morning. Even at home, come on, tell him. His mercy endures forever. Amen. And ever. Come on, let's lift it. His mercy
are right where you are. Just give him the glory at home inside the theater. He's been right this close to you throughout this entire time. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy. To Come on, make it real personal. You are worthy to be. Oh, you are worthy. You are worthy to be. We give you glory, Jesus. Oh, you. Bless your name, oh God. Bless your name, Jesus. We're grateful today for his goodness and his kindness. It's been a long time. Can I say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is good. I said, the Lord is good and greatly to be praised. Oh, taste and see. Has anyone tasted that the Lord is good? Blessed are they that put their trust in him. So come on, praise ye the Lord. Ah, uh, y'all not serious. Come on, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in this sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Somebody ought to praise him for his mighty acts. Somebody ought to praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything that hath breath, that means if you're breathing this morning, you're a candidate for praise. Come on and bless his name right where you are, for he's worthy, and his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, y'all need to pray for me that I don't hurt myself. Because it's been a long time since I've had folks in the building while I'm preaching. You know, for the last 20 months or so, it's been me and Ajani setting up the, the camera and doing all of that stuff behind the scenes. Thank you, son. And uh, Asia, along with the media team, Duran, our great media director. Let's praise God for our media team. They've done an amazing job. His team, JS and Asia and Courtney Buchanan also helping out and making sure that everything runs smoothly. And Stephanie be right there on that couch shouting by herself. Y'all were here, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, today it's a, it's a privilege. I missed y'all. I did. I missed y'all. I missed y'all, and I'm glad that we can, some of us can come together. We know that it's not all of us before the pandemic. It's almost about 600, around 600 of us were gathering for worship. And uh, now we've had to kind of limit it to about 100 plus people. But we know that this is a step in the right direction. And I'm grateful for this opportunity that we have to share today. I want to let you know that there is indeed a word from the Lord. Before we get there, we want to remind those of you who have joined our campaign to take care of our neighbors our neighbors in this city without homes, you know, last week we talked about the fact that we wanted to bring, we wanted to bring uh, some gloves and scarves and hats um, as we're doing our warm for the winter campaign. And uh, we will have a bin by the end of service. There'll be uh, a bin or a few bins outside to collect those if you brought them. For those of you who are online, remember we have an Amazon wish list. We hope that you would uh, do that. Uh, as soon as possible. In fact, by tomorrow, we'd really like to have all of those things in so they can be shipped on time next week, next Saturday, next Sabbath. We would love to go downtown Atlanta and pass those out.
to our neighbors. Amen, church? All right, so we'd love for you to join us. Not too late for you to do that. And we would love for you to participate as we take care of our neighbors in this time of need. And then finally, we do have small groups. Small groups is a way that we grow, way that we build community. It's a way that we look out for each other and walk this journey with each other. We do have a table for you to sign up for our next round of small groups. And we'd love for you to be a part of that. It will indeed be a blessing to you. Well, the word of the Lord is here today. And I'd like for you, if you would, it's been a long time since I've been able to do this. Would you stand to your feet for the reading of the word? And as you stand, I'm going to ask you to join me in Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 17. Those of you who are watching at home, and even those of you who are here in person, I'm going to read in your hearing from Acts chapter 12. Acts, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 17 from the English Standard Version. I'll read audibly as you read silently, but may I ask you to read carefully and thoughtfully. I want you to pay attention to the words of this story, this narrative. If you're ready, shout yes. If you're ready online, put yes in the chat. Acts chapter 12 says this, about that time, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. Remember that. And when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made by God, was made to God by the church. Verse 6, now when Herod was about to bring him out on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and centuries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Don't forget that. And he went out and followed him. He did not know. He did not know that what was being done by the angel was real but thought he was seeing a vision. Mm. When they had passed the first and second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went out and went along one street, and immediately the angel left him. Look at verse 11. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. Y'all don't get tired reading. Look at verse 12. When he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose, another, whose other name was Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. When he knocked at the door of the gateway, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer. Recognizing Peter's voice, in her joy, she did not open the gate, but ran in and reported that Peter was standing at the gate. <laughs> they said to her, you are out of your mind. But she kept insisting that it was so. And they kept saying, it's only his angel. <laughs> but Peter continued knocking. And when they opened, they saw him and were amazed. Verse 17, but motioning to them with his hand to be silent, he described to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, tell these things to James and to the brothers. Then he departed and went to another place. I want to point your attention for sermonic spotlight on verse 9. And he, Peter, went out and followed him. He did not know that what was being done by the angel was real, but thought huh, he was seeing a vision. 
Today, as the Holy Spirit leads, I want to preach from the subject, that just happened. Turn to your neighbor, keep your mask on, and say, that just happened. Uh, that neighbor didn't smile at you. You couldn't see their smile. So turn to another person and say, neighbor, that just happened. You're watching online. Put it in the chat. That just happened. Father, have your way. More of you, less of me. Have your way. If we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need you now. So speak in this place, speak in the virtual sanctuary, speak, and we shall be changed in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. That just happened. There is a colloquial greeting that is used widely during this time of the year to communicate one's well wishes to your fellow human beings. Happy holidays. Days before Thanksgiving, as you peruse the aisles of the grocery stores and checked out with the counter, the cashier probably said, happy Thanksgiving. And in my particular expression of the Christian practice, in my denominational context, there is a common greeting that people use to greet each other when they gather for worship like we have today. Happy Sabbath. And while there is no inherent damage or harm in using these common and colloquial greetings, today I want to challenge you in the building and those of you online I want to challenge our understanding of how these greetings may sometimes be more frustrating than helpful, <clears throat> and perhaps even disturbing to some who are met with them. For the reality is that the holidays, Thanksgiving, and even the Sabbath are not always happy for everyone. <clears throat> the intention of the adjective happy before the word is to wish happiness on the recipient. However, there is often a disconnect between our intention and our impact. Hear me today. And quite often when you wish someone happy holidays, it doesn't change the fact that the holidays for so many people triggers painful memories. When you kindly say happy Thanksgiving to some people, they can't receive the intent because the holiday reminds them of just how poor they are in fellowship and how alone they can feel. And even the practice of greeting people on this holy day with the greeting happy Sabbath has become challenging for me because not only is it a very exclusive term, that can only be understood by Sabbath keepers. I wish I had somebody. <laughs> but perhaps it does not always explain the state of mind somebody is in even on this holy day. The truth is, we've injected and infused the holidays with the pressure, hear me today, to feel happy. When in reality, there is no power in thanksgiving to make you happy. The pressure of happiness has become, become an all-encompassing pressure so that every happy holiday greeting, there are people who shrink deeper and deeper into the darkness of their own depression. Because not only is it not a happy time of the year for them, their own struggle is complicated by the societal pressure to be happy from November through December. Can I preach it today? Can we just be honest? The holidays are not always happy. The season does not always call for jolly. 
And shall we consider that even though other stories have uh, uh, other stories have captured the fleeting attention of the media and news pundits, the reality is we are still in a global pandemic. People are still dying. The sobering reality is that the holiday season does not stop people from dying. The holidays doesn't stop people from experiencing loss and suffering and grief and even death. I don't mean to rain on your parade. I know you still got the memories of that turkey you had the other day. But I want you to understand that the holidays are not always a call for happiness. They're oftentimes for thought. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. In fact, most holidays we know today have historically been enacted or introduced in the context of collective suffering. Holidays are actually holy days that were created for reflection and remembrance of collective suffering. Y'all look at me like you don't believe me. Come here, Passover is the recollection of Israel's deliverance from Egyptian slavery. When on the night the death angel passed through the land, those who had blood covering their door frames would be passed over and allowed to live. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is another name for that seven-day period we know as Passover, was when, was when they would celebrate the fact that death passed over. However, however, it also commemorates hundreds of thousands dying in one single night. Holidays are often rooted in collective suffering. Even our our so-called Western holidays are rooted in human suffering. Thanksgiving is portrayed as a time of giving thanks for the harvest that early American settlers reaped. But the truth of this holiday, can I tell you the truth? Is that it is rooted in the theft of native land, exploitation of indigenous people, and the genocide of these same indigenous people. This is why, while we call it Thanksgiving Day, it is at at the same time simultaneously known as the day of mourning for many indigenous, native, and First Nation tribes. Holidays are often rooted in suffering. And therefore, if we're honest with ourselves, not every holiday is happy. It might be holy, but not happy. And in this story we read today, the reason I talked about the holidays is you need to know that what we read about Peter happens on a holiday. During the holidays, Herod places his hand of violence on people in the church. Herod the king laid violent hands on James. And the Bible says James, the brother of John, was killed by the sword. And when he saw that it pleased the jealous Jews, he unjustly jailed Peter. Oh, God. And this all happened during the holidays of unleavened bread. What I want us to understand is the Bible says that James is killed and Peter lives. James is killed during the holiday, but Peter's alive during the holiday. Because during the holidays, there are those of us who are alive. There are those who have died. And the question I want us to wrestle with today is, why does God allow James to die and Peter to live? James was loved by Jesus just as much as Peter. James was one of the sons of thunder. James was chosen around the same time as Peter. They both followed Jesus. They both served under Jesus. They both were empowered by Jesus, but James died. The question we have to wrestle with is why James and not Peter? The common and cliche answer we receive in the case of senseless death is often the following. It was just their time to go. While this makes sense to some of you, it never quite made sense to me. Was it Tamir Rice's time to go? 
Was it Brianna Taylor's time to go? Was it Sean Bell on his way, on his way to get married? Was it his time to go when gunned down by police? Was it Sandra Bland's time to go? Was it really Ahmaud Arbery's time to go simply because he was minding his own business running through a neighborhood? What about the single mother with children? I don't hear you today who believed the lie that the vaccine would kill her, and now she's dead, not from the vaccine, but from COVID. Was it her time to go? What about the black father who has been so present with his children while so many black fathers have not, and he's struck by a drunk driver and killed because someone had too much fun on Thanksgiving? Was it his time to go? James dies, Peter lives. I think this is worth our attention today. If you're still with me, shout yes. For this reveals the complexity and the perplexity of life. And if you're taking notes today, and I hope you are at home, and I hope you are in the building, here's the first thing you've got to understand, that if you are going to have not a happy Thanksgiving, but a thought full Thanksgiving, not just a happy holidays, but a thoughtful holidays when you can really think about what God is doing. The first thing you've got to do is acknowledge the mystery. Acknowledge the mystery of God that there are some things you and I are not going to understand about God's ways. James dies. Peter lives. Because while this holiday season is happy for so many people, it's very difficult for others. And I know I'm talking to somebody here because for one family who's grieving today, James died. For another family who celebrates today, Peter lives. For one married couple who, who, uh, has able, who's not able to fix it, James died. For another married couple who's celebrating a, 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 a nice wedding anniversary, Peter lives. For one child of an incarcerated parent, James died. For a child whose parent will be home returning from deployment in time to trim the Christmas tree, Peter lives. Oh, God. The fact is, is that James dies, Peter lives, and we get no reason why. I must admit that I don't understand why some die, why some have died during this time. But I do know we as people of God need to be sensitive to not re-traumatize people by telling them it was God's will for their loved one to die too soon. Be careful that while you thank God for your life, you do not minimize the lives of those who are no longer here. The truth is, I as a preacher, as a theologian, seminary trained with a terminal degree, can't stand up here and tell you why your mother died. Why your brother died. Because some things just happen. That cannot be explained fully by theology, at least not on this side of the river. Some things just happen. We don't always understand the mystery of God and how he works. And to try to explain it may be the worst thing we could ever do to someone's faith. Because some things just happen. Why, James? After all, listen, can we just be real? If we're keeping score... Uh, it shouldn't have been James taken. Peter was the one, perhaps, that should have gone. Peter was the one who scolded Jesus and tried to talk him out of going to the cross. Peter was the one who denied him three times. Peter was the one with the felony charge for cutting off Malchus's ear while they were arresting Jesus. And yet this cowardly, violent, loud-mouthed Peter, who was always talking before he thought, he gets to live while the faithful, quiet, docile James dies. And if we think about it, when you look in the mirror and look at who you are and where you are and the issues you still struggle with, you might be wrestling with survivor's guilt, saying, why is it that they're gone and I'm still here? 
But, but, but can I tell you, while you're here and the fact that you are here, you might as well use the time you've got. You might not understand the mystery of God, but you do understand the mercies of God. You might not understand why they're not here, but what you do understand is you are here. And because you are here, you owe it to the life giver who woke you up this morning to use the time you've got. That while you are still here, you, you owe it to Jehovah Jireh who provided for you yet another day to give it all you've got. When I look at those who have been laid to sleep and the fact that I'm still alive and God's still working on me, the words come to mind, it could have been me. Outdoors. No food, no no clothes, or just alone with without a friend, or just another number with a tragic end. But hallelujah, you didn't see fit to let none of these things be. But every day with your power, do I have a witness? You keep on keeping me. That's why we've come together to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. I don't know the answer to why James died, Peter lived, why we're still alive and they're gone. But what I do know is the hymn writer helps me to understand this is my father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget. Watch this. That though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. He is in control. So James dies. Peter lives. He is arrested during the holidays and imprisoned. Now, now, what I love about this story is that Peter is in an impossible situation. For your Bible says that he is in a prison with four squads of guards guarding the prison. Not only that, not only that, but they've got guards, centuries uh, that are at the door to his prison cell. Not only that, but he is chained to two soldiers on the right and the left of him. They want to make sure nobody can get in to get Peter out. But your Bible says the angel shows up in the cell. Okay, y'all missed your shout cue. Y'all going to make me work real hard. Huh. All right, um, uh, they, they, they've got guards on the outside. Make sure you can't get in the prison. If you got in the prison, there's sentries at the door to his cell. If you happen to get past the sentries, you got to get past the guards, the soldiers on the right and the left of him, chained to Peter, and yet the angel appears in the cell. Okay, let me help you get this. Your angels cannot be stopped by anything human. Anything people put as a blockade, a hindrance, an obstacle to your deliverance, the angels cannot, watch this, human machinations cannot stop the movement of your angel. So that whatever you, can't, whatever you find yourself in, God can be in there with you. But watch this, Daniel helps us to understand that oftentimes the battle happens long before your angel shows up. Oh, you're missing your shout cue. The fact is, is that the angel never had to fight the sentries or the guards or the soldiers, but the angel did have to fight evil in heavenly places just to get to where Peter was. The moment that Peter sees the angel, he thinks he's come in from the outside. He doesn't realize the angel didn't have to fight guards and centuries, but what the angel did have to fight was the evil spirits that were assigned to Peter's life. Uh, let me say it very plainly so you can understand. You've got to understand that when God speaks to you, it's after he's already won victories on your behalf. Because by the time the angel tells Peter to get up, He's already fought through angelic, he's already fought through spiritual forces, wickedness in high places. You ought to know that by the time you hear God's word, he's already made a way. Peter's angels had to fight. And Peter now is sleeping. It is interesting that Peter is sleeping in chains. This is not because he is comfortable with his chains. 
Peter is just so tired that in order to wake him up, your Bible says the angel has to strike him. Hmm. Um, I, I want to hang out here for just a minute. Because Peter's not comfortable in his chains. Please don't judge people who look comfortable in their chains. It is not so much that they like being chained in that toxic relationship. It's not that they like being connected to that dysfunctional family. It's not that they like being in that toxic environment. It's not that they're comfortable in their chains. They're just tired of fighting it. Um, they're, they're, they're just trying, they're just tired of fighting to be who God destined to be, destined them to be. So they settle for who they're chained to. You think they're comfortable, they're just tired. And sometimes the only way God can wake you up from the fatigue of being tied to toxic people it's to strike you. <laughs> um, Y'all didn't shout on that, cuz. Uh, do I have any witnesses here that know every now and again God has to slap you upside your head to get your attention, to get you to realize you are more than who you're chained to? You are more than who you've been dating for five years? You are more than the family pool and genetic pool you came from. Do I have anybody here, anybody on the couch, where God had to slap you upside your head? Nah, he didn't destroy you. He just hit you to get your attention, to let you know there's more to life than what you're chained to. Okay, so you're finally awake now. Uh, the angel hits Peter says, wake up. I know you're not comfortable, but you're just tired. Wake up, because it takes a little pain to wake you up. Wake up, and watch this. He is sleeping. The angel wakes him up, and when the angel wakes him up, he says, now get dressed, put on your cloak, follow me. <laughs> Follow me past the guards, the soldiers who you were just chained to. Follow me, oh, I hope y'all get this, past the sentries who were assigned to keep you. Follow me out of the prison that was created to hold you. Follow me past the iron gate that was put there to hold you. Just keep following me. And the Bible says in verse 9, Peter actually thinks he's dreaming. Now, here's where I've been trying to get you all morning. Huh? He can't believe he's actually experiencing this miracle. If you're taking notes, remember the first thing is that you've got to uh, acknowledge the mystery. Here's the second thing, though. You, you got to be aware of the miracle. Because the Bible says in verse 9... He's awake, but not aware. Hmm. He's awake, but not aware to the reality that he's in the act of being rescued. Hmm. He's, he's awake. Uh, you're you're, you're going to get this in a minute. He's awake, he's up, but, but, but he's not fully cognizant of what's happening in the moment. He's not aware of the miracle because sometimes we can sleepwalk through miracles. We are kind of awake. We, we woke, but we're not aware of what God is doing. We're not aware of how God is fixing things. We're not aware of how God is moving on our behalf. Why does this happen? I'm glad you asked. Let me help you. Why, how can we be in the middle of a miracle and not notice it? I can tell by some of, the fa some of you by the fact that you haven't been moved to raise a hand yet that you might be in the middle of a miracle, but you don't know it. I can tell for some of you who are still cooking breakfast and you at home and you hadn't sat down to receive this word yet, I can tell you're, you're, you're awake, but you're not aware of the miracle that's happening. Can I help you to understand why we can walk, sleepwalk through a miracle? Because watch this, it's here in the text. 
the miracle hmm, was done, was not done immediately, but progressively. The angel told him, get up, dress yourself, wrap your cloak, and follow me. Huh. The deliverance was step by step. And, and it happened for Peter as he followed each instruction. He was not delivered immediately, church, but progressively. And that's how God delivers many of us. And that's why some of you are not as thankful as you should be because you were looking for an immediate deliverance. But how many of you know he delivers one step at a time? It didn't happen overnight. He, you didn't quit overnight. You didn't stop that destructive habit, cold turkey. You didn't get up one day and decided you had enough. You were delivered progressively. Mm. You said no. Can I be real? You said no, and then you said yes, and then you said no again. Save me a seat. I'm going to sit right down beside you. You came to the altar for strength and ran back to your secret lover and then ran back to the altar. You got strong at a slow pace. You moved ever so slowly towards the light. Then you retreated to the darkness. Then you came back to the... Is there anybody here who's going to be real with me? That deliverance is not always immediate. It's progressive. And when you are delivered slowly, when you are delivered deliberately, when you are delivered progressively, <laughs> you tend to miss the miracle that is happening. Because watch this, it's not as impressive when it's progressive. Y'all got to get this. You tend to miss the miracle that he's doing right there in your life because it's so slow and methodical that you doubt it's really working. But I'm here to let you know that it's working. Your prayers are being answered progressively. Your change is happening slowly. You're coming out of that toxic relationship progressively. You're coming out of that dangerous addiction progressively. You're coming out of talking about people progressively. Don't sleepwalk through your miracle. It's slow, but show. It's not your pace, but it's not your life. You missed it. I know you prayed, but your prayer belonged to you. His answer belongs to him. You don't even notice the miracle that's happening. I mean, Peter, can you see it? He's being delivered, but he doesn't notice it because it's happening step by step. Get up. Step by step. Get dressed. Step by step. Follow me. You don't even notice your marriage is being saved right now. You don't even notice the way you deal with stress has changed. You don't even notice that your self-control is getting stronger. You don't even notice, sister, that your dating habits have changed. That's why you aren't as thankful today. That's why people got to pump you to praise God. Because you don't understand the miracle that you already are. Right now you're being transformed. Right now you're being converted. Right now you're being changed. And it's happening progressively. Do you know decompression? Y'all know what decompression is? That when you go to the depths of the sea, you cannot just come up real quick. When they were discovering this, the science of decompression, they realized that when they had divers, deep sea divers go down to the depths of the sea, you couldn't bring them up too fast because the pressure, watch this, of coming up too fast, the pressure of coming from the depths to the surface too fast would kill them. Uh, they would basically implode. And what they got, what God wants you to know today is I know you want to come up from the depths of your sin real fast but I got to bring you up slowly progressively slowly because if I brought you up you lose your mind and thought you were the one that got the job. If I brought you up too quick you think it was your intelligence that got you into that school. If I brought you, I wish I had somebody. If I brought you up too quick you 
you get big headed and your ego would implode your life. But how many of you know God will bring you up slowly so that you can give him the glory? Can I push it a little bit further? Not only was it progressively, but the other reason he, he doesn't notice what's happening to him, the other reason we don't uh, uh, notice what's happening to us is because huh, he's doing ordinary things in an extraordinary situation. Uh, uh, Y'all got to feel this. Notice that Peter's not doing anything miraculous. He ain't walking on water. Notice Peter, he, he's, he's, not, he's not casting the axe on the water and watching it float. He's just doing ordinary things. Do you, do, do you see what the angel told him to do? Get up. Get dressed. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. These are ordinary things that usually would not be categorized as a miracle. But when Peter did ordinary things in an extraordinary situation, it was a miracle. Ah. Get up, Peter. He does something ordinary, but he doesn't notice chains fell off. Get dressed. But Peter doesn't understand he's getting dressed in the presence of men who won't wake up and they're supposed to be guarding him. Walk with me, the angel says. And he doesn't realize as he's walking with the angel, he passed through an iron gate. Oh, y'all missing your shout cue. You don't even realize that for some of you, the fact that you got up this morning is a miracle. I know it's not a miracle for some of you to get dressed, but for some of you at home today, it was a miracle for you to place your feet, to get up out of the bed of your depression and actually turn on the screen to watch me. I know it's not usually a miracle when somebody walks, but a black person who walks into a boardroom, into corporate spaces that were designed only for white men, and there you are, sister, with a seat at the table. I know it might seem ordinary to you, but you're doing ordinary things in extraordinary places, and I wish you would wake up and be aware of the fact that you are a miracle. Get up, get dressed, walk with me. It's the makings of a miracle. How do you get your deliverance? Get up, get dressed, walk with me. How do you come out of the situation? God says, get up, get dressed, walk with me. How am I going to deal with these toxic people in my life? He says, get up, get dressed, Walk with me. How am I going to make it in this toxic and dangerous work environment? He says, get up. I'm going to keep saying it till you get it. Get dressed. Walk with me. How am I going to make it through this situation? I can't see my way. He says, get up. Get dressed. Walk with me. Because the miracle is not in you doing anything. The miracle is in you getting up one more day. Getting dressed one more day. Walking with him one more day. Because if you get up, get dressed, and walk, You'll see gates open. You'll see doors open. You'll see enemies crushed. You'll see opportunities open because my God is able. It's in the mundane that we see miracles. It's in the ordinary that we see God reveal himself in great ways. Oh, can I preach this like I feel this? Some of y'all don't know. The fact is you looking at a miracle. Ah, with the broken home I came from, with the stuff I've seen, the stuff I've suffered, you're looking at a miracle. The enemy wanted to close my mouth. The enemy wanted me to walk away from the church. The enemy wanted me to say later for y'all. But God, guess what I did? I got up. I got dressed. And I just kept walking with him. I got to go. I got to go. Here's the other reason why he's sleepwalking through this miracle. He's awake, but he's not aware. It's because uh, the miracle was private, not public. See, Peter was used to Jesus doing public miracles, feeding thousands of people with uh, two fish and five loaves. That's uh, public. 
turning water into wine at a wedding feast. That's public. Even the more discreet miracles had at least a couple witnesses in the room. Jairus' daughter was resurrected, resurrected not in front of a crowd, but at least in front of her parents and a couple disciples. The demoniac was delivered not in front of an audience, but at least in front of the disciples. Please don't miss this. But he's missing the miracle he's in because nobody was there to validate it. <laughs> and some of you are sleepwalking through the miracle that's happening right now because you're waiting on other people to validate that you have been delivered. Uh, you waiting on other people to tell you, oh, I see that you lost the weight. You waiting on other people to tell you, you look beautiful. You waiting on other people to validate who you are, whose you are, and all that you are. Can I tell you, you can't wait for nobody because some of the best miracles happen in private. It's when it happens in private, that's what sets you up to give public praise. And I suspect that some of you watching online and even some of you in the building, the reason why you haven't celebrated your miracle is because you waiting on other people to tell you you blessed. You waiting on other people to tell you you've come out. But do I have anybody here that knows I don't need anybody to tell me what God has done for me. In fact, you weren't even there. When he found me, you weren't even in the room. When he changed my life, you have no clue. I wish I had some witnesses of what God has done for me. So why would I wait for you to validate something you've never seen? I'm going to give him glory because he and I were in the room. I'm going to give him glory because he knows what I meant to say, but I didn't say it. I'm going to give him glory because he's the one who changed me. And the Bible says, Peter gets through the soldiers, through the centuries, past the guards, past the iron gate. And the Bible says, your Bible says, huh, that when he's fully delivered, he comes to himself and he realizes I've been set free. <laughs> he didn't notice when it was happening because it was progressive, not impressive. He, he didn't know it was happening because nobody was around. That's why he thought it was a dream. But when he was fully delivered, Sheldon, when he looked back in the rearview mirror, when he was able to look back at what God had brought him out of, it was only after it was done, he realized, wait a minute, that just happened. I, 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 I can't believe that I walked past those who were supposed to guard me, that I, I slipped past those who were supposed to keep me. That just happened. God delivered me. That just happened. He got you out of that crazy relationship you were stuck in in 2020, and now 2021, you free. That just happened. God delivered you from that oppressive workplace. That just happened. Uh, that God just shut your mouth so you wouldn't cuss them out. That just happened. God kept you sane in the midst of evil people. That just happened. Because sometimes you don't realize it's done until it's done. Final thing, I got to let you go. You got to be, you got to acknowledge the mystery. You can't understand everything God does. You also got to be aware of the miracle. Final thing is though, you need to appreciate the manifestation. Now that's a big word and we must understand that manifestation simply means, watch this, that which you've been talking about comes into reality. The thing you were dreaming about is standing in front of you. You got to appreciate the manifestation. I'm still in the text. After Peter accepts the fact that he's been set free, he went to a house where the church was praying. When he knocks on the front gate, a servant girl named Rhoda goes to the door, 
recognizes Peter's voice. She's so full of joy that she forgot to open the gate but runs in to tell the church the man we've been praying about is at the door. <laughs> they tell her, girl, you've lost your mind. That can't be it because the praying church did not expect God to move. She tells the church their prayers have been answered. They tell her she's lost their mind. It's just an angel. She insists, and finally they open the gate. Now, I want you to understand, Rhoda is the only one filled with joy because Rhoda is the only one appreciating the manifestation. She praised God and told the church because she appreciated that God had manifested the answers to their prayers. Sometimes we miss opportunities to be thankful because we aren't really looking for the manifestation. Manifestation means what you've been talking about is done. The reason we don't live lives of thankfulness is because we're so tight, we're so busy trying to be happy that we're not thoughtful to think about the fact that maybe the manifestation comes in a different way and in a different pace than we thought. Because if we spent more time being thoughtful, we would be more thankful. I'm through because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, it starts when I think of the goodness of Jesus. When I think, when I remember, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul can begin to cry out, hallelujah. Now, here's something you got to know about Rhoda. Uh, here's something you got to understand. She's full of joy and she hasn't seen him. It, it's there in the text. She did not open the gate to see Peter. Your Bible says, ah, Dave, I hope they get this, that um, she hears his voice and she gets happy on the voice. I wonder if there's anybody here who will give praise before you see it. Because as long as you hear its voice, if he said it, it's already done. There's a door between the manifestation and Rhoda. But Rhoda is praising on this side of the door while the answer to the prayer is on the other side of the door. Okay, all right, all right. That, that, that Rhoda's praying on this side of the door. She can't see her blessing, but she hears it on the other side of the door. And I wonder if there's anybody here who's going to give God a praise on this side of the door. I can't see how it's going to work out, but I'm going to praise him on this side of the door. I don't know how he's going to pay that bill, but I'm going to give him glory on this side of the door. I don't know how he's going to fix this marriage. I'm going to give him praise on this side of the door. Because, see, I got some dogs at home, Bentley and Cash. That's their names. I got some dogs, Bentley and Cash. And whenever we get to the door, before they even see us, I don't know if they smell our scent. I don't know what happens. But when we get to the door, they start making noise on the other side of the door. Why? Because even dogs have an expectation that something is about to happen on the other side of the door. I wish I had me a Hammond this morning. Because the reality is uh, if dogs can get happy on one side of the door why can't you uh, get happy on this side of the door don't you know he makes a way out of no way don't you know he's able now unto him who is able uh, to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you ask or think Come on and give him a praise on this side of the door. Because that just happened. Uh, I'm, I'm through. I told you I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. But watch this. Huh? Do you know what Peter did? You read it. Peter, they start getting happy when he finally gets in. Peter hushes them. He said, y'all be quiet. Because I don't want the people who I escaped from to find me. You, you, you understand what's happening here, right? The church is celebrating over answered prayer. There's such a noise in the place that Peter has to tell them to be quiet. I wish 
I had believers who loved God, who thanked God, who were so happy about God so much. I wish I had to stand up here and tell y'all be quiet. They're going to put us out this building. I wish I had some praisers who would lift up their voice so much that I had to hush y'all and tell y'all, listen, they're going to call the police on us. I wish I had, do I have any worshipers here where you can give God a loud praise on this side of the door because that just happened. Your deliverance just happened. Your redemption just happened. God has made a way out of no way. And this Thanksgiving, I ain't going to wait to see it. I'm, go I'm not going to wait for the door to be open. I'm not going to wait for the job to be given. I'm not going to wait till they get me into school. I'm not going to wait till the check cash. I'm not going to wait till it works out. I'm going to give him praise now because he's just that good. Do I have a witness that he's just that good? And I'll give him the praise because that just happened. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Don't sleepwalk through your miracle. It's not a dream. It's not a vision. It's actually happening to you. You just don't realize because it's, it's progressive. You're trying to figure out the mysteries of God. You can't wrap your head around his sovereignty. What you do know is when you look back over your life, when you come to yourself, you realize how far you've come. Y'all know what I'm talking about? When you're in a stressful situation, you realize, oh, I handled that differently this time. That just happened he's been working on you the whole time here's what I want you to do today at home and in this place if you want to stop sleepwalking through miracles you you want to be you want to just be you don't want to just be awake you want to be aware watch this so you can celebrate each step of the miracle I'm talking to myself I oftentimes like to wait till it's over but I want to shout just when the chains fall off. I, I want to shout when I'm walking past things that used to keep me. You, want, you don't want to just have a happy holidays. You want to have a thoughtful one where you think about the miracle that's happening right now. If that's you, I want you to stand all over this building. I want to pray for you that God will give you the awareness, the acknowledgement, the appreciation of the miracle that's happening right now. For those of you who are watching online, this appeal is to you as well. God wants to make it so that you will uh, acknowledge his mystery that there's some things you're not going to figure out. Stop stressing yourself out about trying to figure out the ways of God. Just know this is still your father's world. He's still in control. And even though you can't explain why they are not here, you also can't explain why you're still here. The grace of God, the mercies of God are everlasting. Day. He wants to let you know that what you've been asking to happen, hear me somebody today. I'm talking now not just to your head, not just to your ears, not, not just to your eyes. I want you to hear in the spirit that for many of you, what you've been praying for is happening. It's happening. And when it's all over, you'll be able to say that just happened. You need faith to make it in the progressive deliverance. I want to pray for you. If you want to give your life to Jesus today, if you want to join Revision Church Atlanta online, you just text Jesus to the number that's appearing on the screen right now. Just text Jesus to that number. Text Jesus to this number. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to trust him. 
I, I want I wanted to see that miracle done in my life the miracle of salvation that Jesus gave his blood that I might have eternal life Jesus got up from the grave so that even if death takes loved ones death doesn't have the final say I want to serve that Jesus text the name Jesus to the number on the screen but you're saying I don't have a church home and I would love to be part of Revision Church Atlanta we want you to text Jesus to the number on the screen I want to pray for you even now now Father Abba thank you Thank you, God, that even when we find ourselves in difficult and painful situations, even when life is not easy and times get hard, when we find ourselves in prison predicaments, oh God, that you, that you show up. And while you may not move at the pace and we might not always understand the plan, help us to understand, God, that you are working it out progressively God help us to be more aware of the fact that you are with us that you'll never leave us you'll never forsake us and while it might hurt you'll be there to comfort us while we might cry you'll dry all weeping eyes help us to know all we gotta do is get up get dressed and walk with you and miracles miracles will happen so, Lord, as we face a new year, we don't know what's going to come, but, God, we're just going to get dressed. We're going to walk with you. And we are about to see miracles. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. When we get to heaven, we'll collectively look back at earth and say, that just happened. He just redeemed us. He just got us out of that terrible place. We're standing on sea of glass. Until that day, we'll trust you. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for God's word today. You may be seated. Today, we just want to say thank God. Come on, has God spoken a word to your life today? I want to say thank you. We're about to have Pastor Houston come and lead us in giving. And for those of you who are online, you'll still have the same options to give. Pastor Houston will lead us in that before we let you go. But we just want to say thank you again to all of those of you who have gathered here today. Let's praise God for all of the volunteers, the staff, those who have done the registration, those who have helped you to be seated, those who are serving on media team, both visual and audio. We thank God for all of you. It's good to see my good friend, good friends, Pastor uh, Puck Fordham and Jennifer Fordham. We are great, grateful for you. Come on, praise God. Just wave your hands for them from the South Central Conference and young uh, Minister Pace and the others. We praise God for them. I got my, my godson here, Winston. It's so blessing, such a blessing to have you all here today. And we do hope that as you walk through this experience with God through these holidays, that we will know that there's are, there are miracles that are happening even now. Now, let me tell you this before I let Pastor Houston come. We're not going to be here next week. All right. We're back online virtual. We're doing this once a month for a while till we ease back into this. Is that all right, church? Next time, mark your calendars, is December 18. December 18 is the next time we will be in person. All right, December 18. So next week, join us online on Facebook and on YouTube. Pastor Houston will come now and lead us in our worship through giving. Amen. Come on, y'all can do better than that. If you are blessed here today, say amen. Amen, amen, amen. If you made that decision here today that you want to follow Jesus, we want you to just take out your phones and just scan that QR code that is on the screen. If you made a decision to follow Jesus here today, as we say each and every single week, this is our opportunity to engage in giving through worship. And as we say each and every single week, we encourage you to give a tithe and an offering. Remember, our tithes goes to support what we do globally, 
but our offering goes to support what we do right here within our local context. And so for all my people here in the building, I want you to take out your phones right now and you could take out your phones and you could scan that QR code that is right there on the screen. You might have to zoom in just a little bit, but you can scan that QR code. You can give via cash app you, uh, through that code. You can give via our website and you can also give via PayPal. All you have to do is just scan that code that is right there on the screen. I want all my volunteers in the building to stand up for a second. All of them, they have these lanyards around their neck. On the back of the lanyards are the QR codes as well. If you can't scan it on the screen and you want to get a closer look with your camera, we'll have our volunteers just go around and you can scan the QR code that is right there on the back of their cards. If you are our online viewers, we encourage you to give as well. The QR code is on the screen for our online viewers. But we also encourage you to give. If you don't want to use the QR code, you can do so by going to our website at revisionchurchatlanta.org and clicking on the Give tab. You can also go through PayPal account by texting Rev PayPal to the number there on the screen. That's Rev PayPal to the number there on the screen. You can also give via our Cash App by just simply just typing in dollar sign Revision Church within Cash App. Again, we want to say thank you to each and every single one of you for your continual giving. None of this would have been possible without you. We have just a couple of announcements for you all. We want to let you all know that there is a table out in the hallway for small groups. If you are interested in being a small group leader this upcoming semester, we encourage you to stop by the table. We have Jessica and Sheila who are there ready to sign you up to be one of our small group leaders for this semester. So we invite you to go by, slide by the table and sign up. We also want to let you all know that as Pastor Knight has shared, we have a giving campaign going on. We are going out into the community and we are taking care of those who are struggling with finding homes. And so we're going out to the homes and we're passing out blankets, we're passing out things so that they can stay warm as they're on the streets this winter. And so if you would like to give to that, we do have some bins that are outside in the hallway if you brought your things with you. But we also invite you to simply text DONATE, that's DONATE, D-O-N-A-T-E, to 833-406-0775. And when you do that, you'll be actually able to just buy straight from the wish list that we have on Amazon. You can buy from the Amazon wish list if you would like to give towards those in our community. You can purchase a blanket, you can purchase some gloves, and you can do that right via the link. All you have to do is text DONATE to 833-406-0775. We also want to let you all know that we have a photo booth in the hallway. Listen, we want you all to take pictures. This is our first time being back in person in over a year and a half. A year and a half. And so we want you to stop by the photo booth that is out in the hallway. We have Letitia Stewart that drove all the way from Albany, Georgia with that photo booth so that we can take pictures together. So we encourage you, go ahead and stop by that photo booth and let's take pictures together. We also want to let you all know that um, they, if you have your registration, um, if you have your, uh, what is this? A badge. That's right. If you have a badge, we ask you to drop that off at the registration table right outside the uh, door so that we can collect them. Did you all have a good time in worship here today? Amen, amen, amen. Let's stand for closing prayer. Let's bow our heads. God, Lord, we are so grateful because you are in the miracle working business. God, Lord, we're so grateful, God, that you still work miracles even now. And so, God, we pray that you will give us patience, dear Lord. And may we understand that this is a progressive process. God, we pray that everything that we've experienced in this space, Lord, that we would not hold it to ourselves. But God, Lord, we pray that we would share it with those we come in contact with this upcoming week. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed. See you online next week.